Okay, so over the last week, there's been a lot of concern, a lot of questions regarding this Activision Blizzard acquisition by Microsoft. This is a huge deal, obviously, and I don't think that we can really argue or debate that even in the slightest. But I feel like the console wars in specific has diluted the question a little bit on whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing. Now, what I mean by that, and this is the reason that I don't take console warrior serious, is that a lot of the praise that we're seeing in the community, if the roles was reversed, that would suddenly be criticism. And a lot of the criticism that we're seeing in the game industry right now, well, again, if the roles were reversed, they would suddenly be praising this move. This is how console warriors typically work, where as long as their company is doing it, it's a good thing. And if the other company's doing it, it's a bad thing. So you kind of got to look past some of that. And this goes beyond fans. This goes to the media as well. Just kind of take a look at timed exclusives as an example. Last generation on the Xbox One, Microsoft signed a timed exclusive deal for Rise of the Tomb Raider. This was huge at the time, and they weren't necessarily straightforward about this, and this already had some fans upset, but people were angry that Microsoft would sign a timed exclusive deal for a big third-party game. Well, since then, Sony has made several timed exclusive deals with big franchises. Street Fighter V. And we're not talking about a year, we're talking about the entire generation. Final Fantasy VII Remake, that's been very recent. Final Fantasy XVI, yet another big time exclusive for a big franchise. Even with Bethesda games as of recent, they got a timed exclusive deal with Deathloop, and they also got it with Ghostwire Tokyo. Bethesda is a beloved studio, and they sign these timed exclusives, and did we hear much from the media or fans about these situations? No, it was accepted. And again, this is why I don't take console warriors or console warish topics all that serious. Why is all of this important to this topic, though? Well, because unfortunately, this Activision Blizzard acquisition very much does deal with the console wars. You're going to see a lot of that type of behavior when it comes to discussions like that. So I think for this video, we need to look beyond that, be a little objective about the situation and kind of look at the pros and cons of what this acquisition actually means. So first, let's kind of look at the cons. And I think the first one is pretty easy to talk about, and that is consolidation. This is something that we have been seeing in the game industry a lot in the last couple years. There's been a lot of acquisitions, though it's not just from Microsoft. This is coming from Sony. This is coming from the Embracer Group, which has been acquiring studios left and right. This is coming from Tencent, that right now is the biggest gaming company in the world. And the list just kind of goes on and on. There's been a lot of acquisitions, and some fans are concerned about the consolidation of the game industry and what that means for the future of gaming. And okay, that's a very understandable question, and I completely 100% get that, especially when this comes to big publishers. That means a lot less games will suddenly be third party. They're now first party, and in this case, to Xbox. So I do understand the concern with all of that. We don't want all these third party publishers to be acquired. I've actually said this in a recent video. Truthfully, though, I don't believe that this will suddenly become a common thing within the game industry. The reason I say that is because Activision Blizzard was actually in a very unique situation. We'll kind of get into that situation here in a little bit, but because of that situation, they were actually willing to sell. So again, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. The other con to this, though, is this means less games on other platforms. You know, this is a lot of studios that has a lot of beloved IP that very possibly will be exclusive to Xbox going forward. Now, we don't know the whole situation with Call of Duty, and there's still a lot of questions regarding all of the exclusivity stuff. We're not going to hear about that until the acquisition is completed. But if it's handled like Bethesda, yes, a large portion of these games will more than likely be exclusive to Xbox. And that is upsetting to the PlayStation community. Again, I completely understand that. But this actually does lead me into one of the pros, and that is variety. If we're being honest about this whole situation, just one week ago, people despised Activision Blizzard. And one of the reasons that fans was not happy with Activision Blizzard is because they were moving away from variety. It really looked like their sole focus from this point forward was Call of Duty. So 
when I hear PlayStation fans say, oh, well, we're never going to see another Crash Bandicoot. We're never going to see another Spyro game on a PlayStation console again. But there's actually a very real question. How long would it have been before we saw those games again? Because we've seen Activision take resources from those studios that are working on those games away to work on Call of Duty instead. So when was we gonna see a new Crash Bandicoot game? Was it gonna be next year? Probably not. Was it gonna be a year after that? Probably not. Could have been five, 10 years from now? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I don't think that we really know what was gonna happen because again, Activision was kind of moving away from that stuff. Now, what I do know what would have happened was we was gonna see Call of Duty this year. We was gonna see Call of Duty in 2023. We're just going to see Call of Duty in 2024, probably 2025 and 2026 and 2027. And you, you kind of see where I'm going with this. That was their focus. Crash Bandicoot, Spire of the Dragon, all these other franchises, th those were just kind of there. Maybe we'll get to them and maybe we won't. But with Xbox, they have a completely different business strategy. They have Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Game Pass needs variety. In fact, we've already heard Phil Spencer talk about this. They want to have more variety and more creative freedom for Activision Studios. That means suddenly games like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro has a much better chance of actually happening. So for fans of those franchises, or fans that just want variety in general, well, yes, that would be a pro. Let's talk about another pro though, and that would be trust. Okay, so where am I going with this? Well. What we know about this acquisition is that obviously Microsoft acquired them for nearly $70 billion. That's a lot of money. And well, the thing about that and why this is important is because there's not really a lot of companies that could afford that type of acquisition. Sony more than likely is not a company that can afford that. And even if they could, they more than likely would not be willing to put that type of money down on an acquisition like Activision Blizzard. However, what we do know is that Activision Blizzard wanted to sell. Now, there, there's some mixed reports on who approached who first, Xbox or Activision Blizzard. But what we do know is that Activision Blizzard wanted to sell and they went to other companies. Now, we don't know exactly what companies they went to. We do know that they at least went to Facebook, which again is a massive mega corporation. And they went to another unnamed company. We don't know the name of this company, but more than likely it was of similar size. That means that there's a good chance that they went to companies like Google, Amazon, Apple. And let me ask you, which company do you trust the most? Do you trust the company Microsoft that's been working on hardcore games for 20 years? And they've done a pretty good job at that. Or do you trust the company like Google that started Stadia and then shut down their studios within a year? Do you trust Amazon, which seemingly can't produce a successful game outside of New World, and even then, it's questionable in terms of quality? Do you trust Apple that has Apple Arcade and focuses on mobile style of games? Do you trust Facebook, which, I mean, I'm not going to get into that. Facebook's Facebook, and that alone is already untrustworthy in my opinion. But my point is, is that Xbox and Microsoft is actually the best option for an acquisition for a company that wanted to sell. This is the best option for hardcore gamers. So yes, I'm gonna mark trust as a pro because I do think that Microsoft is a much more trustworthy company than any of the other options out there. In fact, there is actually a debate right now that Microsoft and Xbox is right now the most pro-consumer video game company. So there's that as well. This leads us into the next pro though, and that would be culture within the company. See, fans aren't the only people that don't like Activision Blizzard right now, but also their own employees don't like Activision Blizzard. And that's because their employees have been treated terribly, just absolutely terrible, especially when it comes to female employees. My heart goes out to you all out there, but yes, it's been well documented that Activision Blizzard has not been treating their employees well. There's a lot of scandals. There's several, several lawsuits surrounding Activision Blizzard right now. And this is the reason that they wanted to sell. Don't listen to old Bobby Kotick over there acting like this isn't the reason that they wanted to sell. It's very, very obvious and it's very, very ridiculous. So this acquisition here actually brings hope and optimism within Activision Blizzard. There's some reports already circulating that 
Several of the employees are optimistic about this acquisition, not just because the work culture, which is already going to probably improve compared to old Bobby Kotick's culture, but also because Xbox is probably going to give those studios more creative freedom. This is something that we talked about earlier. They're not just going to be shoehorned on Call of Duty anymore, and we're already hearing talk about them no longer doing Call of Duty as an annual release. Phil Spencer has talked about having more variety, and he's saying all the right stuff. And this does have employees over at Activision Blizzard excited. So in terms of development, this is actually a pro. And that leads us to the final pro, and that is simply about leadership. You take a look at somebody like Bobby Kotick, and I don't think that anybody really exactly likes him too much, but I'll tell you one thing, people love Phil Spencer. And again, it's not just with the game community. If you listen to the employees over at Microsoft, they love working for him. Phil Spencer is a gamer. He plays a lot of games. You can go look up his gamer tag on Xbox, P3, and you can see him play games all the time. So a lot of the moves that he makes within the game industry is to benefit gamers. Sure, you can say that this primarily benefits the Xbox ecosystem, but he's done a lot of good for the game community as a whole. On top of that, what is the Xbox ecosystem? Well, okay, maybe these games won't necessarily reach PlayStation platforms. And again, we've talked about that. I, I know that that's disappointing for the PlayStation community, but under Phil Spencer's leadership, they've expanded dramatically in recent years. You can get these games on Xbox consoles. You can get them on PC. You can get them on mobile phones through xCloud. And all of these games, of course, will come to Xbox Game Pass day one. No, you're not going to have to spend 60 or $70 to purchase these games. But rather, you can have an Xbox Game Pass subscription, pay $15, and have access to these games. These are great things for the community as a whole. So I think it has been very clear since Phil Spencer has taken over Xbox. He is a great leader, and I don't think that anybody can doubt that by this point. He's done a good job for Xbox. He's done a good job for the game community, and I'm excited for the future of what he can bring. But most importantly, I think that Activision Blizzard, once again, is an exciting publisher to keep an eye on. I cannot say that they were an exciting publisher as of last week. I think that's a shared belief within the entire game community. We were not excited about Activision Blizzard's future before this acquisition. But under Xbox and under Phil Spencer, yes, suddenly they are exciting once again. So, I will ask you all, is the acquisition for Activision Blizzard a good thing or a bad thing? And I understand the concern. I absolutely do. But ultimately, I would have to say that it is a good thing. It's good for gamers, it's good for the community, and it's also good for the employees. Anyways, though, that is it for this episode. But if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that bell notification and subscribe button below. And I will catch you all in the next video. So, peace out.